Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And this is not going the way we thought it was going to go for Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, the Power of the Rings of the Lord. For Amazon. Yeah. Yes, I know you're tired of that. I'm tired of talking about it too. Yes. <laughs> So, uh, this review obviously is not real, but it's very funny, and this is what we thought was going to happen. This is coming from the Babylon Bee. Right, but we figured that everybody was going to show for it. Not everybody is. We're uh, that's what we're wrong. We like thought that the media was going to be like, oh, it's glorious, it's amazing. And there are, yeah, there are a couple outlets that are, but a lot of the reviews that I'm seeing, the early reviews are praising the production values, but that's about it. They're like, yes, it looks expensive. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's yeah. that's it. Um, but the Babylon Bee, I love this. Rings of Power review is storytelling atrocity with Bush League production and acting so bad it's offensive. But there's a black door, so five out of five. Yes. <laughs> um, no, but it's not. It's not much better. This is Entertainment Weekly. The Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power review. Amazon's prequel is kind of a catastrophe. Oh, well, it's not really a prequel, as we discussed. It's not really a prequel. Uh, this. <laughs> Give this appendix an appendectomy. Or oh. let's let's talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, rants, guys. Over two hundred and seventy-five thousand subs. Woo. Thank you for the support. Speaking of support, the support has been amazing for Crimson Wren Volume One from Clownfish Studios. You don't have to guess. Uh, what our prequel to Shadowbinders is, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, because we're still alive and this is actually what happened. And this is canon, so this is written by Geeky and myself and drawn by Jose Garcia. And this is the prequel to the Shadowbinders webcomic series, which is coming back. Uh, all, all shiny and new here eventually, as soon as we get our ducks in a row. But uh, for now, you can read Crimson Wren, and a lot of you have opted to do that. And we still have 22 days left on the clock on Indiegogo, and we're over $40,000, so thank you for the support. So let's, let's talk about some of these reviews. I want to read this Entertainment Weekly one. Um, this one is Daily Mail. Christopher Stevens reviews The Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. No turkey, whoever bloated and stupid, could ever be big enough to convey the mesmerizing awfulness of Amazon's billion dollar oh. Tolpen, Tolkien ep. No, that's what it is. It's not, it's not Tolkien, it's Tolpen. It's budget cut Tolkien. Tolpen, yeah. Tolpen. Tol Tolkien. It's like I can't epic. believe it's not Tolkien. Yeah. It's like if you order Tolkien from Wish.com. Pretty much Tolpen, yes. Uh, Lord of the Wings. The budget for the project was a massive future gambling, a billion dollars, cost Amazon $250 million alone to secure the rights to the prequel. Um, it's not really a prequel. Okay. It's not really a prequel. There are hardly any well-known stars. Uh, they booted a Tolkien scholar. I believe it was Tom Shippey. Well, they went who, found another one that just happened to line with what they wanted. Yeah. Does that one have blue hair? No, she's she's not white. Okay, I'm pretty sure. I just I was just checking, like, but yeah, she they, might have been a redhead at one point. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. You know, we pointed out yesterday that they the cast was even like, there's no way to know what J.R.R. Tolkien would have or wouldn't have liked. I'm like, wow, I don't know about that. He tended to write a lot, and there were a lot of people that talked to him, knew him, interviewed him. Uh, you've got Christopher Tolkien, who didn't even like the Jackson films. <laughs> you know, well, we might not know what he would have liked, but I can assure you it probably wasn't this. It probably wasn't just making shit up, right? Um, we've got uh, Grace Randolph, apparently. Yeah, yeah. I, I Squid King was talking about this, and I was like, I wouldn't know. She has me blocked. Yeah, I don't. You got into it with her or something? I didn't get into it with her. I just basically said that if they were hiring her for uh, Rooster Teeth, they must be, like, desperate. Oh my god! <laughs> I think that made her well, mad. Well, of course we we didn't get we didn't get a screener copy. Now Grace Randolph, to be fair, she's actually agreed with us on multiple occasions. She kind of backed us up on the He Man thing with Kevin Smith, um, but obviously we haven't seen it yet. You know, she's she's a privileged member of the exclusive media, but she said Elrond's gay. How is Elrond gay when Elrond's got got a daughter? You Wait, know? what? I don't know. Um, again, this is fan fiction. Uh, this is the New York Times. The prestigious New York... Is this Planet of the Apes? I'm sorry. I'm still stuck on him being gay. I'm like, wait. So wait, he was forced to get married and that's his daughter, but he's still gay? I don't know. Uh, Arwen just magically So appeared. one of the writers wanted to, to bang him in the Lord of the Rings movies? And I don't know. I mean, all elves are kind of gay. Tolkien scholars agree. Certain Tolkien scholars that Tolkien intended for all the elves to be closeted gays. Uh -huh. No, I don't think so. Okay. Anyway. I'm sure some of them are, but I, <laughs> some of them thought it doesn't make sense in that case. 
New York Times, prestigious publication, New York Times, the Rings of Power Review, shiny, not yet precious. Again, this is what they're talking about. Um, it looks pretty, it looks expensive, it looks pretty expensive, but there's not really a whole lot there. Uh, um, now, one outlet that loved it, and they keep, they keep repeating this, you know how we talked about the media just kind of repeating each other? This is The Guardian, The Guardian, which is sort of the, the 180 from the Daily Mail. The Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power review, so astounding it makes the House of the Dragon look amateur. Well, that sounds like somebody got paid. <laughs> I don't know that, but I mean to go that far, yeah. you know, like because we're gonna start a war again, like we had, we saw it with stupid, you know, Alita against Captain Marvel. Now they're trying to start this war. Yeah, I, I think House of the Dragon is gonna win. Ultimately. You can people like could like both. They cannot like both. They could like one or the other. I mean, people like that one usually watch the other. So why can't you? Why are you trying to put them against each other? Other than the fact that you know one looks good, one doesn't. You know, the funny thing is about the House of the Dragon. The, the news I'm reading about it, and I haven't watched it. I need to watch it. I actually, it's it's definitely on my to do list. But um, what I'm hearing is it's breaking record viewership numbers. And um, people are actually coming back to Game of Thrones after being massively disappointed about the ending of Game of Thrones. They're like, oh, I gave it another chance. It actually wasn't bad. That's what I'm hearing about. You're not hearing a lot of this shit. No, like, and that's what know. they're mad about. So that's why they're pitting them against. I mean, yes, they're going to be going against each other because they're the same kind of genre at the same time. But, you know, for audiences that like these this kind of stuff, it's a win for audiences. And they're trying to split audiences. Um, but here they echo this review. The Guardian calls it so astounding it makes House of the Dragon look like an amateur. And then, but here we have uh, this is BBC, Lord of the Rings prequel is Amazon's most expensive show to date, uh, and their headline is The Rings of Power review a visually staggering flawed epic. Flawed. So it looks pretty. Flawed epic. Um, so that seems to be the case. And when you go searching for reviews, you know there are some that are. Mostly positive, but this is really interesting. This is not what I expected. This is no, not what I honestly, expected. No, honestly, it's all. not. Um, there are ways to do a prequel, and the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power, does them all wrong. Oh my God. See, there's ways you can shock us. This is one of those ways. We I, really thought that it was going to go the other way. I am shocked. It takes six or seven things everyone remembers from the famous movie trilogy, adds a water tank, makes nobody fun, teases mysteries that aren't mysteries, and sends the best characters on a pointless detour. The latter is Uber Elf Galadriel, who spends the premiere telling people to worry about Sauron. In response, people tell her not to worry about Sauron. That was that was Harry Potter, That's wasn't it? That's one hour down. That's seven one to hour go. down. Seven to go. Sound like a billion dollars yet? Ouch! Tolkien imagined Galadriel as an immortal who leaves a sun-swept garden paradise because she yearns to see the wide, unguarded lands of Middle Earth and to rule their realm. They're a realm at her own. See, I'm a Tolkien scholar. Rule their <laughs> realm. It's a whelm. It's a whelm. It's a Tolkien whelm. It's Tolkien. <laughs> to it's, rule a their, realm, yeah. it's a Tolpin. That that's a verse from Tolpin. That's a line from Tolpin. Uh, to rule there a realm at her own will. Kate Blanchett played her, and uh, she was amazing. The new Prime Video series picks up Morphid something or other. Her name is I don't know. Um, yeah. So it is a history lesson prologue. There's battle montage. We did this in the Fellowship of the Ring, but they did it well in the Fellowship of the Ring. Despite all the streaming war headlines, this series is nothing like HBO's Game of Thrones spin off House of the Dragon. Uh, it's a family drama plus dragons. The two Rings of Power episodes I've seen feel more like an eight-hour Infinity War. Um, with disparate goods coalescing toward a big bad. The one thread that feels new concerns um, Arendor and Bronwyn, the star-crossed Star-crossed in a disputed land. He's an elf. She's a human single mom whose sweet chats cause a social ruck. Oh my god! Wait, wait. She's a single mom. She's milf. She's milf. She's milf. Wait, is that? Wait, that's why. Wait, wait, wait. So oh my did, god! They're making up like new role. races. That's they're like, making up new races. Milfs. Milfs, milfs and elves. Oh, look, look, look. So it's like it's like so now it's a romance novel. You know, the the single mom was bored with her life to the hot elf came and. Oh my so god. What do you want from Lord of the Rings now? Tolkien tapped a well of myth that uh, once elemental and postmodern to green ancient moods of dark wizard, fairy tale, lore, torrid, brave new worlds, blah, blah, blah. Now it's just IP. Uh, now it's just IP. 
Tolkien saga was anti-industrialization, which makes it hilarious that Rings of Power is an Amazon product. That, that is, is true. That is kind of funny, yes. Good point. <laughs> Imagine Saruman throwing an Arbor Day party. <laughs> God, um, this is bad. Viewers hungry for Middle Earth, anything could be satisfied. And I guess you could argue Rings of Power is no worse than all the other expensively empty genre adventures, altered carbon, anyone, that proliferated through the streaming era. But this series is a special catastrophe of ruined potential, sacrificing a glorious universe's limitless possibilities at the altar of tried and true blockbuster desperation. C minus. You know, I get that though. I think that's what it is. It's like people they're 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 trying so hard that they ruin it. You know what I mean? Oh my god. It's not um, necessary. Let's go make something new that's maybe inspired by. No, it has to have Lord of the Rings in it because we paid a lot of money for that shit. Uh Grace Randall said it's just boring. It's just boring as hell. Um they said that uh Mor Morphid Clark. Mor who names our kid Morphid? I don't I, know. If you're Her listening, I am I am sorry for so many things. Um she got the role of glut. Now we're gonna have all the people in the comments like, "My whoa, name's Morphid." Whoa, 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 wait a minute! She's Clown so fish. happy to get the role. She was faded when she found out she got it. I feel bad. I have to report she's the worst casting choice of the show and drags the entire thing down. She makes no. Here's what. Here's what. Here's what. Eric speaking was telling us. Oh my God! She makes Galadriel both an Elven Mary Sue and an Elven Karen. Who would like to speak to the manager? I can't believe it. I can't believe she's both of those horrible things. Yes, watch right now if you want to. You know, if you like, if you get off the Karens and Mary Sue's, you'll love this one. That was coming from Grace Randolph. Oh my God! So Elrond is clearly, clearly Galadriel's gay boy best friend, which makes for a very relatable dynamic. Ah, uh, yes. One problem. All right, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, at some point, at some point, maybe she's adopted. Is our adopted? Get out the Tolkien appendices. Maybe she's it's, appeared. She just sprung out of the ground like Cabbage Patch Kid. She did. Like, that's, she, how that's, how, that's how she got in the movie. <laughs> Their friendship is like the one thing that softens Galadriel because if you're like this nice, smart guy and you can stand her, there must be something the rest of us aren't seeing. <laughs> he looks smug. Smug Elrond. Well, he was kind of smug, yeah. I mean, that kind of fits. Uh, tragically, there are no LGBT characters in all of the Lord of the Rings because Tolkien was a devout Roman Catholic. But we know what he intended. We wait. What? Yeah. How do we know that? How no, 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 no. They, 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 this is what he would have liked and intended. He would have liked. He would have liked gay Elrond. <laughs> gay Elrond. I think the showrunners are trying to fly in the face of that as much as possible. There's a lot of subtext here, particularly with the elves. I'm telling you, Tolkien always intended for them to be in the closet because that's where they belong, according to Tolkien, that bigot, misogynist, homophobe, openly gay actor Lee Pace did a wonderful, uh, captivating job in the movies. I think that whether Tolkien likes it or not, I think it's become a clear element of the elves in particular. So and they basically Sexual it... tension, multiple whoa, whoa, whoa. elf male scenes. So elves are gay. Elves are coded gay. But then there's a bunch of female elves. So where, how'd that happen? I. I anyway, I, I'm, 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 I'm like this. Elves like, are now officially coded gay. Look at all these elves. Look at all these elves right here. Shirtless hot elves. Um, anyway, guys, this I'm gonna wrap this up. But really, this is gonna be interesting to watch. Not the show itself. The show itself sounds like it's boring as hell. But it's going to be really interesting to see how this goes down because it's not going the way I expect it to go. I still think it's going to overall have pretty positive reviews. I still think normies are going to tune in because, oh, look, hobbits. You know, yay, hobbits. Um, hobbits? There's hobbits in it. Oh. Hobbit, hobbit adjacent. There you go. Hobbit adjacent. Right. They're the hobbit adjacent. What are they called again? I forget. Something foots? Yeah, harfoots. Yeah, there harfoots. you go. Harfoots are basically hobbits. Budget cut, <laughs> wish hobbits. Well, that's not what he wanted. Tolpin has harfoots. No, actually, they were in. They were. I know. That's what I'm saying. But you know, I'm being a smartass because you're. Somebody smart said in the comments yesterday that we should call them nobbits. Nobbits. <laughs> not hobbits. Nobbits. No, that's the elves nickname each other. Wow. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, uh, yeah, I don't have any interest in this other than to make fun of it. I think it's it is ironic that that was the best line ever that Tolkien would have been vehemently against this, and also all the spinoffs and the shit that they're gonna do. Like, right, that was not... and and then they're like, but the, but you don't. No one knows what he would have wanted. He would have wanted this. 
lots of people have all that information. Well, hey, told, you know, told you exactly what he thought. Hey, often, and then they get fired. <laughs> you are telling fired. me the right thing, so. All right, we're gonna wrap it up. Yep. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.